What's up? Got a few things situated here, but hey, we're ready to go. Welcome to Candlemakers Happy Hour. It's Tuesday, not Thursday. I know this may be a permanent change, but today we're going to cover an awesome topic. Um, if you're here to join me today, we're going to talk about three secret lessons of the fast food candle trend that you and I can learn as candle makers, things we can take back to our shop, no matter how big or small we may be. It's going to be awesome. So welcome again. My name is Kevin. This is Armitage Candle Company. What I believe is the premier online resource for accelerating your candle making technique and business. Uh, today we're going to talk about this trend going on, but before we jump in, I just want to mention that we've published a free PDF template of for burn testing, covers all of the ASTM industry standard criteria. If you're just getting into candle making, it's super helpful. If you've been around a while and you're not sure and you want to kind of revisit your testing practices, it's also a really good resource. Even if you just copy paste it, just use it as inspiration for your own. Like that's, that's totally fine. But if you want that, go to armitagecandlecompany.com slash burn dash test, burn test. With a hyphen in there, that's that's what the dash is. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that, I believe, in the description, especially if you're watching the replay. Okay, well, let's dive in. Today, we're going to talk about McDonald's and Dairy Queen and Panda Express. And I'll start out with a story. I'll admit I'm a huge McNuggets fan. Like, Oof, give me a 10 piece and I'm a happy camper. Like I love McDonald's and through college, I definitely paid for it in the pounds, but the happiness was worth the payoff. But here's the deal. McDonald's, Dairy Queen, Panda Express, they all created unique candle lines this year. And this isn't the first time that candles have been done, but it kind of came on the heels of each other. and a little bit of a trend, really interesting. And as a casual person, you may say, well, that's kind of neat. That's kind of gross, maybe. For me, I was like, I love nuggets, but I don't, I don't know if I'm, if I'm that desperate that I need to burn one of those in my house. Anyways, we'll get into the details of what they released, but they all did this. And it, you know, it's kind of like, wow, that's really interesting. Bit of a fad, bit of a trend. But if you're a candle maker watching closely, you might say, huh. First of all, you may say, get out of my territory. But second of all, you may say, you know what? There's something I can learn about this. These companies are big. They're, they're giants in their industry, the fast food industry. So they know a thing or two about marketing a product, about selling something, about connecting with their customer base. Like they know their people. At one point, well, I'll say I am their people a little bit. I love me a blizzard too. And and if you're watching closely, there are at least three lessons that we can pull out of these moves that they made. They're super interesting, super great. And today I'll cover th my three, my the insights that I've gleaned from this move made by the candle by the fast food industry that we can use as candle makers. And I would love to hear at the end. I'll I'll go through any questions that show up. You know, if you're watching a replay, leave a comment. Um, if you think that there's even more to learn from here, or if you disagree with some of my insights here, I'd love to hear that two good discussions all around that sharpen each other. Okay, let's dive in for real this time. So the first lesson that I see out of um, what's going on here is that, like, don't start with risk. You're running a candle making company. Don't start with risk. Every single one of these companies is established in their own right. McDonald's, we've all heard of McDonald's, McDonald's, Dairy Queen, Panda Express, they they have their people, they have their business, they're worth a lot of money, a lot more money than I am, or ever will be. And they know what they're doing. Which means they can spread a little bit of their risk out. So this year, let's talk about what they released and why, what what I mean by risk. Well, McDonald's released six candles that all smell like individual pieces of a quarter pounder. 
Panda Express released a single candle, honey sesame chicken breast. And Dairy Queen released six candles too. Those are based on their new Blizzard flavors that are coming out. They're all a different flavor of Blizzard. Well, the, they aren't here to take part in the candle industry. Like they're not entering the candle market permanently. And we'll, we'll talk about that temporary placement, but like they're not becoming candle companies. That's not what they're doing, but they are creating, developing, paying for new candle designs to be sold for a limited amount of time, but sold nonetheless. And it's a bit of a risk, right? Because A, some of these candles sound disgusting and they may, miss, they, they may not make their money back on this adventure that they're going on, which makes it a risk. They're making an investment with no obvious return. Maybe they'll get their money back. Maybe they'll do great. But like the risk they're taking on the candle product alone is pretty great. They're making this investment. As you and I know, creating a candle takes time. It takes research, development, careful practice. But if you look closely, if you, if you peek under the covers, they're not doing this to make money on candles. They're drawing attention to moves that they're making in the business that they do run, the fast food business. And we'll get to the story behind all this shortly. But they're okay. I, I, I would argue strongly. They're okay losing every penny they've invested in this move. And the reason is this. They can afford to. They have a larger play uh, going on because they've drawn this attention to their product line. And so this is a risk they can afford to take. And that's the lesson here. Don't start with risk. Let's say that you're a uh, old farmer McDonald's. You're starting McDonald's. I don't remember the story. I know we watched it in school, but you're starting your new, your new uh, fast food company and you decide, all right, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a candle line to promote my new fast food company. You're like, that's never going to work. That's never going to work. They already have a business model. They have a core business in place already. And then they're launching a candle line. They can afford that. It's a risky maneuver. As a candle maker, you may say, this is the equivalent for a candle maker. I'm going to start a candle company and I'm going to make everything for everybody. I'm going to make an expansive product line, a lot of scents, a lot of colors, a lot of styles. Like I want to make every type of candle, every type of melt that's out there for my people to enjoy. And you spread yourself super thin, or maybe you're established, but you're just getting some momentum going. Um, and you're dipping your toe in the water of a new design. Well, what the problem is, and my number one experience is that like every candle design requires testing, patience, feedback, iterations. Usually you have to try new things when they don't work out. And to build out a very solid product line very large, very fast when you're just getting going, it's that's a risk, right? You're going too fast. The number one reason for burnout from candle makers is that they try to be Yankee Candle, right? They try to make, I, I'm going to go to a fair and I'm going to bring all 25 of my candle designs. Well, how much time are you really able to put into those candle designs. Cause like the truth is a good candle takes a lot of time. And if you're not a seasoned candle maker who's been around the bend and has a list of formulas and designs that work, you're probably going too fast. I don't want to speak for you. Maybe, maybe you've got a handle on it, but I, I feel like the biggest burnout that happens is people trying to create too much for too many people. They can't keep up or they all, are kind of mediocre quality because you can't put that time in. So take the patience, take the time. My advice there for beginners is stay hyper-focused, build a really small product line to start, establish that baseline of business, you know, make that your core product, something that uh, works really well 
and that you can kind of hang your hat on. And when you, when you have that in place and you have that income stream and you're starting to see a little extra money and this whole thing's starting to work out a little better at that point, I would say maybe then invest in maybe building out your product line or trying out something new wood wicks. Maybe it's some new scents, new fragrances. Maybe you haven't done wax melts. You want to start doing that. You can put time into that because you know you can count on the other stream of income, of product, of business from the core that you put, that hyper-focused uh, being really good. So things that I think that you have to have in place before you take on risk through expansion or I'll say uh, variety in your product line is one, establish an audience. Get people who know what you're doing, love what you're doing, and will uh, come back to you. Two, build a solid product or products, a few products that you know you can go back to and you can bring in that income and that interest at any point. Three, learn the craft of candle making inside and out, right? Understanding the theories and putting into practice and getting through your first hundred candles, maybe your first hundred candle sales, like that'll build some confidence in you. And obviously it'll hone your ability so that you can expand your product line. You can do these things that you find interesting. And when you've done that, established an audience, built a solid product, learned the craft, that's your core business. When you have your core business in place, you can afford to take a little more risk. You can afford to do what McDonald's and Dairy Queen and Panda Express are doing and take a loss on some of these things. When you're just starting out, you can't afford to take too many losses, otherwise you're out. It's hard to keep up, that's burnout. Risk is okay to take, but you need that steady horse in the race. So the first lesson kind of summarized this way, don't compromise your core business by creating too much risk in expansion or variety of your product line. Plain and simple. So the second lesson, my notes are a little sideways here. My second lesson here is that learn to use scarcity. Learn to use scarcity. All these candles, with the exception of Panda Express, who only had one candle, all of these candles are sold out. You can't buy them anymore. If you're a conspiracy theorist, you may say, I don't think they were ever for sale. Maybe not. Doesn't really matter. The point is, you can't buy them, which means if they show up on eBay, they're already going to be at a higher price than what they were selling for. And this limited availability creates intrigue and it allows them to charge a premium because once it's gone, it's gone. In McDonald's case, in another 50 years, they may do it again. Who knows? But once it it's, it's gone. So that scarcity motivates and it tells the world that, you know what, this right here, this is unique. Right? McDonald's candles, Dairy Queen candles, that's not something that, that people have in their home. Right? It tells the world this is unique and it motivates people to take action. Scarcity, when done right, when done with good intentions, is actually a really good tool for your business. So the lesson for candle makers is, well, hey, uh, Maybe I should consider building scarcity into my product line, right? Because if there's unlimited candles from you, if you say, if you ask for it, I'll make it. If, if that's your bottom line, you got to keep up with the demand. <laughs> You're not really telling the world that this is so unique that you need to get it. And, you know, that's okay too. But unlimited makes no pressure, right? People will procrastinate. I'll just come back later, they say. You know, oh, they're selling that cool candle. I'll get it later, maybe. Procrastination, as we know, usually turns into what I did in college a lot, which is where I don't do it. Just like that. So how can you build scarcity into your product line? Well, there's a couple ideas. They're not perfect. They require a little bit of tact, 
And they may be a small shift in the way that your strategy is today, the way that you're positioned. I would say that you can build scarcity through seasonal collections. Collections is a hot buzzword in the candle community, right? This set of candles, they all kind of go together. They have their own unique label design and they're seasonal. They may be a Christmas candles or fall candles or summer candles, right? Or just some random event that you make up and you promote and you do that. These are a seasonal collection, get it while it's here and then it's gone. Or maybe you put it in the archive and you pull it again out later for next year, but you can only get so many. So you build scarcity in that way and you have to promote the scarcity. People don't know if it's limited or not. If you're on Etsy, it'll you can keep that quantity number accurate. People will know, hey, well, there's only three left. Second way to build scarcity in your product line is, I mean, obviously just make a limited amount and tell the world there are only a few of these. Even if they're not seasonal, maybe you just go through uh, a product line revision every few months. That's okay too. That's a good way to build scarcity. And when you have really good brand awareness, that works really well because people know, oh, if I want to get this, I got to get it now because it's going out. You can do this through the way you name the candles, the way that you, if you're doing ads, the way you spell out the ad or just the way that you write the copy in your listing. A lot of options there. Third way to build scarcity is theme your products that they go together. It's kind of like a collection, doesn't have to be, but more of like the fast food candles are a really good example of this. These are themed, they all go together. It's not like a collection, it's a quarter pounder. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, it's not hard to do, but like do it right. Don't force it in this hokey way because part of the promise of scarcity is what you're getting here is quality. What you're getting here is going to be something that uh, because there's not unlimited, you know that I'm going to promise you a higher quality. I put time into this, right? Like I only made so much because they're special to me. It's my art. And so that's that's one way, other way to build scarcity. So that's the second lesson is use scarcity to incentivize your people to buy your products. Okay, last one, last lesson that I have. And I talk about this all the time, all the time. Final lesson, lesson number three, the story matters. Story makes a big deal. Quality is important. Quality, building good quality candles is important. The basics are important, right? Knowing how to melt the wax, add the fragrance oil, pick out a wick, testing, all of this is important. But does anyone really believe that the candles put out by McDonald's and Dairy Queen are high quality? Maybe you do. I don't know. Wasn't able to get my hands on one. They sold out. Scarcity. But the belief that these are high quality candles maybe a little sideways, frankly, it doesn't matter. So at, here's the question I'll ask you, rhetorical, or answer it if you want. But when does the quality of your candle matter? When does the worksmanship or workswomanship of your candle matter? I would argue it's after it's already in their home. So you can't, you can't sell the candle based on quality right? You may make the greatest candles this world has ever known. And if you're following these episodes, you're on your way there. I'm on my way there, right? It's a continuous journey. But that quality alone is not going to sell your candle. Eventually, you get big enough, well-known enough, renowned for your quality. That becomes your story. But that's where I'm going. You need a story to sell. A lot of groundwork has to be put in place in order to get that candle in someone's home. There's three phases to sales. Sales. You got to find your customers. You got to sell to them. That's the obvious one. And then you got to follow up with them so they come back. And maybe you're following up through their work, through your work. But finding, selling, following up. You can't even sell. They don't. They, the quality comes into play in the third phase. The quality doesn't matter 
until later. So you can't live on your quality to sell your candles. So here's what's unique about the candle. It's not the flavor. It's not the scents, right? These fast food candles, you can buy these scents almost anywhere. Or a lot of these major suppliers have weird sense that you could probably make the Big Mac or the blizzards. It's not the containers. It's not the colors they chose. It's not the wicks that they're using. It's not even their labels. In fact, if you look at their labels, there's possible uh, issues with the FPLA and all that based on what I saw. Doesn't matter. That's not what's unique about these candles. The unique part of these candles is the story. Here's the deal. Everyone knows these brands. Some people hate them, but they told a story through every single one of these candles. McDonald's was celebrating 50 years of the quarter pounder. Dairy Queen is releasing six new blizzard scents for the fall. And they made a candle corresponding to every one of those. And Panda Express was celebrating the return of the honey sesame chicken breast to their menu, right? These aren't arbitrary can They're not random. There's a story there. And that resonated with certain people and it made the news, right? Because it's kind of noteworthy. What they're doing is noteworthy. And every single news story, every blog article you see will point back to why these candles exist. A lot there. If you burn it, you might be very disappointed. It may not smell anything like that. But the point is it got into your home or their home or whoever it is because the promise of what it was, the story of what it is, was interesting. It was relevant. There's some people that love Quarter Pounders and love McDonald's and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to get this now. And then there's other people who hate, hate it. They're all, oh, that's disgusting. But here's the deal. They probably told someone, did you hear? Did you hear the McDonald's did this. You go through Etsy right now, a lot of the most popular candles are all kind of funny. They've got these catchphrases. Quarantine-based candles are huge right now. That's the story. No one cares what they smell like. They like the, the funny part on that label. That's art, people. That is beautiful work, telling a good story right on the candle. Now, your story may not be right on the candle. You may have it built into your company. It may be your mission. It may be the way that you write your copy out for all those things, you may put it there. But the important part is that to sell a candle, you can't just make a great candle. Now, that's super important for building, for keeping that momentum. But to build that momentum, you need to get that work in their face at the right time for the right people. Your story isn't necessarily for everyone. The same way McDonald's story isn't for everyone. Your story is for your people, the people who want to know what you're doing, who believe in your mission, who like the, the message and the promise you're putting out because they'll get that. They'll resonate with that story. They'll take your product. They'll love the quality. You build trust. You've delivered on your promise. So story is huge. So while contextually the story that's being told by McDonald's, Pan Express, Dairy Queen, while contextually they, it's kind of different, right? They're running a fast food company. The point is that the story, the motivation behind your work, the mission that you're doing, it matters so much more than the, the quality of the final product. Now, don't make bad candles. Don't just tell a good story, right? Because they'll never come back. It is important. But to get the sale, to get your foot in the door, to build that initial relationship, you need to become a storyteller. Everybody's a salesman or a saleswoman. You want to be successful in running your candle business? Get good at storytelling. It's something you can improve. You can learn skills, techniques, how to structure an argument, how to write good copy, how to take pictures that tell a story on their own. That's a thousand words. All I'm saying is don't, don't ignore that. Stories are important. So that's my third lesson. Tell a good story. And that's the biggest part of these candles that were put out by these fast food giants. They understand that. They understand that. They know that. They connected with their people. They said, hey, you need to know this. Okay, so let's recap. First lesson. First lesson was, what was the first lesson? That's right. Don't start with risk. Build a hyper-focused product line, 
right? Get that core business in place, core business in place before you start adventuring out into other avenues, right? You need the steady audience. You need uh, to be good at the craft. You need a solid product, something that can sustain you so that you can take risk. Now I get it. It's all risk, but bigger risk, right? Stay small. Don't spread yourself too thin. You, you'll get there. You'll get there. Stick with it. Don't burn out. Lesson two is you learn to use scarcity in your product line. You can even build that into your story, which is lesson three, but learn to use that scarcity. You know, you're making a promise of higher quality. This is art. You can get there. And that third lesson, storytelling. It's huge. It's huge. Storytelling is like probably the number one thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you, Lucky Sport. We, we'll get there. We got to get there. I'm, I'm working on it. You're working on it. We're all working on it. And sometimes you need feedback to get there too. So, okay. Remember, candles aren't necessary for light anymore. Remember that what you're selling to people is an experience or a promise. Or in some cases, if you're really good, it's a decoration. Um, your message needs to match that. Right. You can't go off telling candle stories about Big Macs and McNuggets when you're selling premium Joe Malone competitive level candles. Right. You need to match your audience. Tell the story that will resonate with them. All right. We'll do a Q&A shortly if we have any. But I just want to make a quick mention. If you haven't had a chance to download the free testing PDF template, just go to armitagecandlecompany.com slash burn test. It's in the description if you're on YouTube. Um, it's a great template. And I'm, I'm not just pitching it because I want to. I really believe in it. Even if you just copy paste it, right? It's just got all the stuff in there. And there's a lot more information on the website too. If you haven't been there, just go visit it for five minutes. I, I think you'll find at least something that should connect with you. Otherwise... Uh, let's see what we got here. I don't see that we have much, nothing on Instagram or YouTube here. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up. We talked we talked a lot about standing out in a saturated candle market before. right? The fast food giants have bestowed upon us. Their playbook is unfolding before our eyes in how to connect with people. They're very good at it. This is why they are multi, multi-billion dollar companies. They know what they're doing. So candles, remember, candles aren't unique. Candles are wick wax smell, nothing unique about there. So to establish yourself and differentiate yourself, it's not necessarily through the candle. It's through your story, your scarcity, your customer experience, your digital presence, how you build loyalty and that relationship with your customers, how you blend scents that are custom and complicated and the bottom line is it's the mission and the promise that you make to your people. Right on. So take care, everyone. I'll see you in next in the next episode. It's been great. It's an honor. Candlemaker Happy Hour Tuesdays at 6 where I'm at. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye.